Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are here. And we are about to get busy. All right. Let everybody join in and grab what they need, all that good stuff. We are going to paint the Senorita. Gotta get this watch group together so I can see comments and whatnot. All right. Try a little different today. I'm gonna use my phone as the. Oh, I gotta mute this. Okay, there we go. I'm trying to use my phone as the camera. And on time and with wine. All right, Evelyn, you go. All right, we are working with all primary colors today. We're using red, yellow, blue, and black and white. Now, this is my palette. Here's all those colors I just said. Um, you might look at this and say, but wait, how are we gonna get skin tones? Don't you worry, we are gonna make that happen. Magic. Okay, let's see. All right, I see some people coming in for the comments. Fabulous, all right, I can see everything. Here we go. All right, so you're gonna need your big brush and your little brush, so always good to have brushes of different sizes. Hmm, it's not the brush I wanted. Oh, well, it'll be the one I'm gonna use. And then, this one too. All right, so review. We're gonna use all primary colors, red, yellow, blue, and black and white. Now, if you wanna add some variation, you by all means can do so. You can always deviate from anything that I'm uh, telling you to do on these because this is your painting, not mine. Do what you want, do what you want. Hi, Kayla. All right, so here we go. Got me a fresh canvas. This is actually a recycled canvas. When we did, uh... nope, I haven't done this with you guys yet. <laughs> this is a brand new painting. It was uh, the flowers in the field. All right, here we go. Make sure that your brush has a little bit of water on it. And we're gonna start, let's start with the darker side. So we're gonna do some blue on the right. So get yourself some, I have a bad habit of having too much water on my brush. Make sure to get some of that off. See, look at all that water that's coming off. All right, get some of that blue, load up your brush like so, and we're gonna make small cross marks. So I kind of go down, down, cross. It's kind of my formula. Um, it might be a little bit more uh, foreign to you because you're gonna be able, probably concentrating on it a little bit more, uh, but I'm gonna be going my normal speed, which this is, it's not an exact science as to how you tap on this paint. It's more so just to give it a really cool texture as opposed to it being as smooth as like with some of the other paintings that we've done. And since this is a recycled canvas, I'm gonna have a lot of texture on this. So, I ran out of paint. You always want to use all the paint that's on your brush, but you don't want to get too, too much paint either. It's a fine line behind having way too much hmm, water, in that case, and having too much paint. If it's thin, then you can always add extra. If it's thick, you need water to thin it out. So you see right there, got a nice texture going on right here with just brush strokes that we're using. 
And now, don't go in the middle of your paint because you wanna actually keep your yellow kind of yellow. So, over to the side, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna get just a little bit and drag it away from the rest of the yellow because I did not wash my brush. So now, I've got blue and some yellow on that brush. And I'm gonna keep on going down towards the bottom. Now I need a little bit of water because I'm not getting too much paint that's coming onto my canvas right now. You see how we have like a lime green now? Okay, same thing. I'm gonna use a little bit of the white, but we're gonna take it from the bottom or from the middle and drag it out so it doesn't contaminate the rest of our color. We want just enough so we can get some extra color on the brush. That's all. And down here in the corner, make sure you get that all filled in. Now, we have a blue area and we have this lime green. I want them to merge together. So right here in between the blue and the yellow, not washing my brush, I'm gonna keep doing that exact same pattern we've already been doing. And I'm gonna slowly drag it on up into that blue. So you see how my colors are now blended together? Now, I'm gonna come over here to the yellow side. Well, it will be yellow, see? I know that because I have the example. I'm gonna wash off my brush because I don't want it to be green right now. And that's kind of what's on our brush with the mixture of the yellow and the blue. Washing off my brush. And I'm gonna get some of that extra water. This brush loves to hold on to extra water. So, get rid of that. You guys doing okay? I see you've got some people that are watching. That's fabulous. If you wanna say hello, I'll say hi back so I know who's watching. Hey, Angel. All right, now we're gonna actually start with the white again. I have a clean brush. We're gonna go into the white Drag it away, always away from the pile. That way you don't contaminate your colors. We're gonna start up here in the corner and we're gonna do that exact same pattern we have been doing. Down, down, across, down, down, across. And just kind of get out a little bit further from that corner. Now, I've got white paint there. You probably can't see it and that's fine. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna do the yellow again but again, take it from the middle, drag it away. So now I've got some yellow paint. Now, I wanna keep some of this white, but not all of it. So, I'm gonna start here at the bottom with that yellow, where, where I left off at. Hey, Carla. Hi, Jazzy. Okay, down, down, cross. It's the exact same pattern we've been doing. We're gonna slowly creep it on up there into that white, and it should start to lighten up. And as you cross over into that blue that we already did, it's probably not dry yet, so it's gonna start to blend in with that yellow again. So we get even more of a blend that's going over here. Almost like a sunshiny type of um, feel, because it's nice and bright in one corner. Okay, so I'm bringing down this yellow until I've got no more paint on my brush. See how it's kind of running out right here? That means I'm done with that particular area. So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to wash my brush. All right, and get some of that extra water off my brush.
All right, so we're gonna use now some of this reddish color here. And again, drag it away. I'm not getting a lot. I didn't get a lot of paint this time. And with my brush, still loaded with the red, I'm gonna come over here and drag it away from that blue. So now I've got the blue right on top of the red. Ooh. And what that does is it's going to be able to, or it's gonna enable us to be able to mix. Oh, I dipped the back of my brush in there. Um, it's gonna enable us to mix it on directly on the canvas so we don't have to mix anything on our plates. So down here, down, whoops, down, down, cross. Look at that purple we made. Ooh. Now, see, I'm not getting a whole lot of paint here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some water on my brush and repeat. Drag it away, drag it away. Down, down, cross. Or X's, or whatever you want to do. Now, if this green is still uh, wet, when you mix it in our little purple color, you're going to get brown. We don't want that. But if you do get it, it doesn't matter because our lady is actually going to cover up anywhere that you might have brown. So don't sweat it. La Senorita, hi Jeff. Glad you could join us. All right, so only paint with what's on your brush. Don't get more paint. Just keep moving it around. Now, another fun fact. We have red in this. Red and green mixed together give you brown. We also have turned this into a purple. Purple and yellow mixed together will also give you brown. Ah, brown. So keep that in mind when we go to do our skin tones. All right, so last thing we're gonna do is we are going to wash our brush again. Wash that all the way off. Dry it off. And then we're going back to that yellow. We might actually have some brown in here. Okay. Take some of that yellow, drag it away. Take some of that white, drag it away. And do your brush stroke. See? Got a little bit of brown coming in. Now you might say, but that doesn't look like brown. You see I match? <laughs> All right, so. That is our background. We have a really cool textured background. Now, the, the, the what do I wanna say? Um, the important part is that once you have your background done, leave it alone so it can dry. Because if you keep fussing, then it's gonna take forever for it to dry and we won't be able to move on to our next step. And our next step is going to be that we're gonna paint in our senorita, but if you are still having a wet background, we can't paint her in. Oh, hey, I can actually see this on my tablet. Yeah, all right. Maybe, what happened? Maybe not, okay. Well anyway, so you should have a really colorful background and make sure that your brush, if you're not using it, if you're all done, it needs to go into the water cup and let it hang out. And we just gotta hang out for a second too because um, we need to dry. So this painting kit is available on uh, my 
Shopify store. It is Lauren Luna dot my Shopify dot com and there's about 15 or 16 different kits that you can choose from now this is one of them and the good thing about that doing this this is my crystal light um, the, the good thing about doing this is that since it will be on a video you will also have access to replay it again if you decide to buy the kit which would be great if you did I would love it if you brought the kit thank you so much Oh, yes, Carla, the, the, the canvas is vertical. Armin, please send me some bread, that'd be great. All right, now up here in this corner, my blue is really, really light, and we blended so many different colors. For that to be just plain old blue is kind of bothering me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash off my brush again, dry off my brush. And then I'm going to get some of this blue, drag it away from my pile. Matter of fact, we're done with blue, so I can use more of it if I want to. And get some of this white. So now I've got white and blue on my brush. And right here in this corner, we're gonna do our stroke tap tap cross. Give you more coverage, blend these colors in, and make it not such a flat color. Flat color, I mean making it look like a cartoon. We want a little bit more excitement. Woohoo, there goes my canvas. Okay, there. Voila! So, now we're back to needing it to dry. Little to the left. Ashley, sorry, just now saw you. Is that better? Having a hard time hearing you. Uh-oh. I wonder if my volume is down on my phone. I was doing... Nope, my volume is up. have returned. Okay, I'm plugging in my headphones. Please let me know if this works better for you. Is that better? I have headphones in now. Please let me know if you can hear me better. Did I move the camera again too? Sorry. There. Okay, sorry, Ashley. I'm actually sitting right next to my phone, so I figured that it was going to pick up the volume even better. I wanted to make sure I wasn't yelling. Evidently, I was wrong. My bad. Technical difficulties for people that don't usually use such technology, you know? All right, so I am waiting for my canvas to dry. And um, give me a thumbs up if you guys are ready to move on. If you're still waiting for yours to dry, do not give me a thumbs up. That's how I know if I can move on or not. I think we have our highest amount of viewers tonight, too. Hi, everybody watching. That's exciting. Okay, 
like, well, I didn't get any thumbs up, so that means everybody's waiting. All right. Well, oh, I got one thumbs up in a heart. Thanks, guys. Okay, so for those people that are just watching, this is eventually what we're going to have painted. And then, um, yeah, you can see it's not a perfect match. Every time you paint a painting, it's going to change because uh, paintbrush, supplies, colors, paint color, everything. It's, it's all different. See, the blue is not the same, but I mean, it really doesn't matter because it's still essentially going to be the same. It's going to be a variation. As long as we can make it look similar, we're good to go. And then plus, you guys don't have my hand, so it's not going to be identical. And even I have my own hand and painted that original, it's still not going to be identical because reasons. So there you go. Uh, okay, so I'm ready. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do is you're going to follow these shapes. If you follow these shapes, it's going to help you be able to paint your lady. And just think about the fact that it's always easier to paint them smaller because then you can grow larger as opposed to the reverse because then that's when it gets kind of difficult. So what we're going to do is with the smaller brush, we're going to get a little bit of this yellow and a little bit of this red. Again, drag it away. Now this time we are going to mix it. So you should have a pretty decent looking orange. Okay, now this is what you would call, we're gonna be sketching on our canvas, but with paint. So closer towards the top, we're going to make a circle that's about the same size as the palm of your hand. So just kind of roughly sketch that out. Start with the letter C and then Bring on the other side. Having water on your brush is very important because if you thin your paint down to make it the consistency of uh, melted ice cream, that helps move the paint around a lot more. If it's too watery, it's, you paint it on there, it's just gonna drip. If it's too thick, you're gonna end up using way too much paint. Just make sure you add a little bit of water, mix it into your paint. That's what I'm doing right now. Mixing it right into my paint. See how it's not dripping? Right here. If it was too much water, it would drip all right on off the page. And because this doesn't have too, too much water, I'm good. Now, towards the bottom, we're gonna do a smaller letter C. There's a C. Then we're gonna do it the opposite direction. There's her bun. Oh, if you got this far, good job. You should have two overlapping circles. That's it. I want to make sure you can see this. All right. Now, for her body, we're going to make a larger number eight. So start at the bottom of this circle we did here and you're gonna paint the number eight. Or an hourglass, because she's an hourglass-shaped woman. <laughs> Now notice we, we tap the bottom of the bun right here. So if you can imagine with me, head, bun, shoulders, waist, boote. Head, bun, shoulders, waist, boote. See how that works? All right, wash your brush. Oh, I almost stuck it in my 
beverage. That would have been no good. I can't tell you how many times I have done that in my life. One time I was uh, painting, oil painting, and I got ready to take a drink of what I thought was coffee, but it wasn't. <laughs> it was turpentine. So I just noticed that the consistency was bad. So I spit it everywhere. And um, then I called the poison hotline and they said I'd be okay because I didn't actually drink it. I just, you know, got ready to. Uh, so yeah, thank God. All right. So we are going to get some black on our brush and go ahead and fill in your circle here that you made with the black. You want to paint over the orange that you've already put there. That was just basically just so we could sketch it out and we know where stuff was going to go. The fancy painters call that an underpainting. The teacher in me will never be able to stop giving facts. So, sorry. That was one of the problems I would always run into when I worked at all the, the franchise places that would do painting things like this, is I would always, I teach. I just can't not teach. Uh, random facts, they are all in my brain, especially when it comes to art. Now, my black is not a solid black right now because evidently there was still a wet area that was on there. And that's fine because we're actually going to be painting on top of that black later too to make it look like her hair is just dark and not just a solid black. So you also want to do the bun here. So grab a little bit of black and go ahead and fill that in. I've been teaching for 18 years. This is my first official, no, I'm, I don't wanna say my first official job out of college, but close enough. I worked as a visual designer at Bloomingdale's in New York City before I finally started teaching. But I only did that, that Bloomingdale's job for less than a year. I can't remember the exact amount of months, doesn't matter. All right, so. When painting her, uh, her hair, if you want it to look that much more natural as it being a for real head with hair, try to make your brush strokes go exactly like the hair would flow on somebody's head. So it comes from the crown. So you want to paint your brush strokes coming down and then collecting here at the bun. Then the bun is kind of a circular thing. So you want to make sure that you're painting also in circular strokes to make it look like it's three dimensional. Jeff, I see that you said nice. What are you commenting on, honey? You know there's a delay, so and I've already said about 20 things by the time you type it in there, so I never know what you're actually saying to me. Okay. All right, now we're gonna mix some colors again. Now this is up to you what um, complexion you want your senorita to be. You like how I rolled my tongue right then, right? Senorita, yeah. Okay, so if you still have that orange, great. If you need to make some more, we use the red and we use the yellow. Um, so I have a kind of a rust orange, almost the same color as the shirt I'm wearing today, but it's too dark for my lady. So what I'm gonna do, oh, I need to move the palette. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna get a little of this white and mix it in there. Now I don't have a whole lot of paint on my palette right here. Um, so that means I don't have to use a whole lot of white and I can just add a little bit at a time until I've gotten to the complexion that I want her to be. And if you don't actually mix all of it, like see how I have a darker area down here, I can use that for the shadows or not it's up to you 
because I'm actually going to paint right on top of it. Okay, so now, remember how we said head, bun, shoulders, right? So this is going to be where her shoulders go. And you only have to paint over just to the edge of that figure eight that we did because her dress is going to drape, yes, drape down um, over some of this. So fill this in. Think about this as her back. Paint right on top of the background that we did. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Jeff said that my background was nice. Thank you so much. All right. Now I recycle these canvases, so um, sometimes they stop liking the fact that I'm painting on them. And by that I mean, you can see that it doesn't really want to hold the paint anymore. The more I paint on top of it, the more it kind of like just moves away and it's like, no, I'm good. I think I have enough paint on me for today. Thank you so much. All right. So that's all we need here. Now, if you want to show that she has the shadow of her hair and all that good stuff, you're going to use the smallest amount of black ever. Smallest. So in that flesh tone that we just made, and I got to actually make some more, so give me just a second. You see how she's got a shadow from under her bun and then right here we can see where her her back muscles would be that's what we're gonna do I have to mix my uh, flesh tone again because I ran out but I, I love doing paintings just using primary colors because it gives you so much more color variation than just getting it straight out of the tube I could have said, yeah, let's get a brown, but then you'd have the, just this regular old basic brown that everybody has. This way, if you're painting, mixing your own colors, your color is gonna be completely different from somebody else's because you're not gonna be putting the same quantity of one color in to mix it. All right, so now my girl has, uh, oopsie, okay. She has her flesh tone, so now, just a little tiny bit of black. Little tiny bit of black. Do you see that? It's only on the corner of my brush. That's all you want. And then I'm gonna get some of the flesh tone. Now I got a lot of flesh, because black is so very dominant that it's going to just <laughs> dominate. I don't have a better word. It's gonna take over your entire painting and you don't want it to do that. You just want enough that you can see that there's a value difference between um, the first initial coat that we put on and then this. Now you might say, but that's really dark. I'm not done yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to paint. I got a little bit of water on my brush because the paint stopped moving around for me. There we go. See how that's starting to blend? Now this down here is going to be where the shadow is for her dress. Yeah, there we go. That looks good. Now, so you should have the shadow here. And actually, you know what? What I'm going to do is when this dries some more, I'm going to paint over this to overlap it some, and then it will even look that much more realistic. So I'm going to wash off my brush right now, and I'm going to get just a little bit of white, just the corner of my brush, a little bit of white, and I'm going to give her some highlights. And I want to blend it in directly into the flesh tone that we've already got on here because I don't want it to be like a cartoon I want it to be kind of realistic 
once again just a little bit on the corner of your brush and I'm just painting right on top of the flesh tone that we already did. We're going to give her some scapulas. <laughs> okay, another fun story. My first year of college, I went to Marion College in Indianapolis, which is known for being a nurse's college. So I signed up for anatomy knowing that I needed to, I needed to know that as a, an artist. What I did not know was the fact that it was nurse's anatomy. So I'm in there with all the nurse majors and you know, pre-meds and biology majors and uh, snoozing actually, because um, I, it, was, it was way over my head and <laughs> it was stuff I was never gonna need to know. And yeah, so that was anatomy class for me. I do remember some of it though. Uh, I remember that the class was right after dinner at five o'clock and I would, you know, the itis kicks in and I'd be snoozing. All right, so she has her scapula. Those are their, your shoulder blades. So now what we need to do is we need to give her her arm. So she needs to go up and out. So we're gonna draw some math symbols going back to my math teacher days. Start here in the corner of your figure eight, figure eight hourglass shape, and we're going to just sketch it out. Make that arm go up, and there, done. Isn't it beautiful? All right. We're gonna do another one. We did the, what's this? Uh, eats the bigger number, so it's like a greater than. And now we need to do the less than symbol. So get a little bit of water on your brush. I might have them reversed. I haven't taught math in a long time. And there you go, all right. Oh, got another fun story. So when I was younger, I hated math. Ironically, because I then became a math teacher as an adult. Isn't that fun? Anywho, um, so I just remember eating my words. I, I, I wish I remember what teacher it was I was talking to that I was like, why do I need math? I'm never going to need this as an adult. Ah, <laughs> I'm going to be an artist. Yeah, okay. So anyway. <laughs> so as your figure eight comes out, we need to give her a little bit more dimension because obviously she can't have stick arms. So let's give her a little bit of a shoulder. So just thick, thick, oh my goodness, can't talk. Thicken this up right here. And then it goes to the elbow. And thicken up the underside of her arm. It goes from wide to thin. And there you go. Now she's got an arm. So almost like a tree, the human body does the exact same thing. As it goes away from its trunk, if you will, it's going to get, it's going to be wider the closer it is, and then it gets thinner um, for some people. I'm not one of those, but you know, we, I digress. So you're going to have a thick area here for your shoulder. And then as it goes towards the, uh, the elbow here, it thins out. I'm going to go over it again because my pain is kind of thin. All right. And then there's that. And then as it comes down from the elbow to the wrist, wider to thinner. So you're gonna have a wide area here, and then it goes to a thinner area.
there's that. Oh, Senorita has an arm. Brazo. All right. She's a flamenco dancer. She's the, the finger symbols, the castaneas. Castaneas? I forget how it's pronounced. All right. You should have one arm. Now, to do the shadow on the underside, remember we need just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of black. Just get that corner of your brush with some black on it. And then you're gonna blend it directly into the paint. Now, you might say, but that's so dark. Just keep going. Just keep going. Because as you keep going, it's gonna start to thin out and not be quite so dark. That, just that little tiny bit of black did all this. So you see why I say you have to be very careful with how much you put on because it will completely overpower your picture. Now, I even am gonna wash off my brush because I don't want all that black. And then I'm gonna keep going and painting with nothing but a clean brush. And you got an arm. Woohoo! Sherwood, if you're still there, thank you so much. All right. So now I'm going to kind of pause just for a moment and remind all of our new viewers what we're painting, let you guys catch up with me. This is what we're painting. This is Senorita, and it is available on my Shopify store, along with 15 or 16 other options, many of which I will be painting here on Facebook Live. And actually, I put these videos over onto my YouTube channel as well. So you can always go over there and check out some of those videos and um, rewind and etc because I know live can be kind of hard at times. Drink some more of my beverage. All right. So we got to do, I can't remember, if, if that's less than, right? That's a less than symbol. I think. I don't remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're going to paint this arm now. So again, you're going to go from wide to thin when you get to the elbow. So I got a little bit of water on my brush, mixing it into my flesh tone color, and I'm going to connect there, wide to thin. I need some more paint. There's that. All right, she's got an arm. Let me make it a little thicker down here though. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Then, get some more paint because we got to do the upper arm here. So, not too much of this arm is shown so we only got to paint a little bit of it. She went off the canvas. There. there we go. I think she needs a little bit slightly wider arm. And then we're going to put just a tiny, tiny bit of black. Remember, we don't want it to overpower. so that we can show that there's a shadow under there. There, there we go. Now I've changed up the way that I'm, I'm doing my brush stroke. I'm going um, kind of a diagonal now. Whereas when I was doing just the flesh tone, I was going, you know, all the way across just to fill it in. I'm going in a diagonal more so to give the illusion of the fact that it's curving around because I want to make it look like she's three-dimensional. So 
Controlling the direction of your brush stroke is also very important. Remember how we did the directional brush strokes here in her hair, just to give the illusion of the fact that it, it is a, a three-dimensional object. You wanna do the same thing when you're painting uh, her arm too. Uh, because that is going to give that illusion. We are being magicians right now. Who says you can't do magic? All right, I'm gonna give just a little bit of white here too. You wanna be careful with how much white you put on because just like black, it's very dominating. And if you add way too much white, which is one, one thing I noticed with a lot of those franchise places, they put too much white on their paintings and it looks like it's just made with chalk. Now having a chalk painting, yeah, you know. All right, now I'm gonna do the exact same thing up here, just a little bit of white, just to give a little bit of a highlight. When you have your highlights and you have your shadows, that helps also with making things look three-dimensional. And there we go. We got a good amount of viewers tonight. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Sorry, no music. I'm tired of them trying to take my video down. So feel free to play your music. How are we doing out there? Is everybody cool? Caught up with me? Any issues? I'm waiting for people to see what's going on right now. If you're interested in trying this by yourself, you can always get the kit at my Shopify store and you can replay this video and you can check out what's going on right now. But the good thing about the fact that um, you'll be watching a rerun is the fact that you'll be able to back it up and pause and rewind and all that other stuff. So right here is pretty dry. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get some black and I can paint over that bottom part where we had done the shadow so it'll look like the bun is overlapping her back, which is what I wanted. That's what we're going for. There it is. Evidently this wasn't all the way dry and that's okay. There we go. Now, with that flesh tone that I no longer have, got to make some more uh, again. Okay, Ashley, I see you're catching up. No worries. You can catch up while I'm making some more flesh tone because I'm out. I'm going to use some of that red and some yellow. Mix it all together. Now I've got a really nice burnt orange color. Burnt orange. Yeah. And just gonna kind of give some streaks here for her hair. Follow those same directions that we went. And if you don't get a whole lot of this burnt orangey color on her uh, her head and her bun, don't worry about it because it's just so, supposed to be like highlights in her hair. And that's it, done. And I'm washing off my brush. Let's give everybody a chance to uh, catch up. Carla, if your shadows don't look like my shadows, what you need to do is make sure your brush is all the way dry uh, clean and then dry it and then go back over it with that flesh tone and if I'm assuming you, your shadows are too dark yeah 
that means you had a little too much black on your brush. And it's so easy to do. That's why I said just use the corner because that will help you um, control how much black is on there because it's just going to completely dominate your painting. Anybody else out there need some assistance? And if you're just joining us, we are watching, or we're, well, you're watching me. <laughs> we are uh, painting Senorita. Now her hair is really wet, so you can't really see those streaks that well. But there you go. Maybe that's a little better. You can see how the direction goes. You go curve to the side and some of them are straight and then over onto the other side. That way it'll give you that dimensionality. All right. So I actually really enjoy doing this with you guys. I hope that you're having fun too. I know it's kind of hard sometimes. I've got to slow myself and pace myself because I'm not used to pain and stop and pain and stop. It's just go, 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 get it done. And I'm done. Uh, yeah, so I'm trying. Just like you're trying to keep up, I'm trying to slow down. <laughs> Okay, so we should have already painted in the flesh tones for the arms. Then we went from wide to thin, and then that shows us, you know, where her, her arm mus muscular structure is. And then over here on this arm, we did the exact same thing, gave a little bit of a highlight. And the last thing we just did was add some of the same, that exact same flesh tone, ouch, and put it in her hair just to give some highlights in her hair. So we still need to attack this dress now. Now the dress is a fun part because it's also up to you how big you're gonna make your booty. So that's up to you. But our first stroke is we're gonna be making these uh, giant U shapes to show the cowl of the dress. And then uh, a little bit of the shadow here underneath with the red and just a little bit of black and then a little bit of white for her booty cheeks but i'll walk you all through that okay so go ahead and make sure your brush is clean and i'm gonna get a new paper towel these are done All right. Okay, I got some red on my brush. You always want to make sure that you mix just a little bit of water into your paint. The key is melted ice cream consistency. That way, when you go to paint, it's not going to drip and it's not going to be uh, just a big blob of paint. You want the paint to actually have some movement to it. So starting here on her shoulder, go ahead and paint on around what you've already done. And you always want to use up all the paint that's on your brush before you go get more. I turn it around and use the paint that's on the opposite side. That's how you can conserve your paint. And it makes the technique look better too. So my paint is all the way on. See, I'm, I'm not getting anything. So that means now I can go back and go get some more. Keep following that same shape, going as a, a U. Make sure it connects to the top of her shoulder and bring it on down. SpongeBob, bring it around town. My son's favorite show when he was little was SpongeBob. 
so it's actually proven to be very beneficial to me as a teacher because of all the episodes of SpongeBob that I've seen. I was able to relate to my students because I would have SpongeBob references for days. For example, I talked about photosynthesis in one of the science classes that I taught. And there's an episode of SpongeBob where he refuses to eat and he said that he's going to catch his food through photosynthesis. And by Jove, didn't that get the kids to connect to what I was teaching them? All right, so you want to have the centermost part of the cowl maybe about your entire finger length. That's how long it should be. Besides, so mine is a little crooked. All right, and then pretend like you're following that, that figure eight that we did. So from the armpit, you're going into the waist and then coming out for the hips. So you technically should already have a line there, but I, we want to make sure that we get her, her hips there too. So armpit in for the waist and around for the bootay. Oh, she's kind of leaning a little out on one side. <laughs> That's what happens when you're uh, painting or writing uh, and it's not straight on. Okay, so she's got a little, little, little more on one side than the other. Let me go ahead and even her up. Okay. Well, she's just got a big old booty on one side. <laughs> okay. That's slightly better. Now, as I said before, it's always easier to go out, make things bigger than it is to make them smaller again. So, Jeff, you should be painting as well. All right. Once you've got roughly her shape, go ahead and just fill it in. Paint the whole thing in with your red. Now see, when I paint with you guys, and generally, um, I don't use just a regular old red. I use a magenta. Magenta looks like red, acts like red, except it mixes so much better. All these colors that we mixed using this, this magenta here, it actually would not have looked the same had I used just regular old red. And um, that's a whole science lesson that I'm not going to get to. Okay, so now she has been filled in. Now, don't wash your brush. You want a dirty brush. Because now we're going to come over here to the white, drag it away, and we're going to give the highlights on the cowl. So the way that you're going to do that is just by tracing along that U shape that we've already done. You see how those colors start to blend in together? Now I need just a little bit of water on my brush so it'll keep going smoothly. You know you need water when your paint runs out or it won't, it, it, it's not a smooth brush stroke like what, what you can feel. You can totally feel the difference. So there we go. Now she's got a cowl on her dress. A funny thing, I found out that this type of thing, if it was a curtain, you know how they have a little drapery like this? It's called a swag. And I said, huh, I wonder if that's where they got the word from, you know, it's my swag. Yeah. Uh, my students were so excited to find that out. All right, there you go. Now. And over here in the, in the boutte area, just kind of tap that on. Don't wash your brush. You should have a very, very pink color right now. All it is is just a highlight. So just highlighting the area where a light would be shining off of something that might be protruding. <laughs> so 
That was very PC, wasn't it? Okay. There we go. Now, it's not being quite as smooth as I need it to be, so that means I need some water. And we've got a rear end. Now, we are almost done. Almost done. Okay. Don't wash your brush. You're going to get just the tiniest bit of black. The tiniest bit of black. And we're going to go right underneath this cowl. That is a lot of black. But watch what happens. As we work with it, I got just a little bit of water on my brush just then. As we work it, it's going to start to blend in with the um, magenta, which is what we want. And that will give the shadow of her dress. Now, if you find that you, when you start to paint, that it's really, really dark, stop painting, wash your brush, and then paint with the paint that's already on your canvas. Get rid of the extra stuff that's on your brush and then paint with what's on your brush or what's already on the canvas. Use that water and move stuff around. And then you can come up here and add some darker areas in the cowl, the swag. There we go. And that same pink, you can keep playing with it. Go down here, blend this shadow in some more. Yeah, there you go. Give you guys a chance to catch up with me on the dress. Anybody need any assistance? We doing okay? Because the last thing we have to do is a flower, and we are done. Jeff, thank you. Jeff says it gives her, because they're she's a little bit wider on one side, it gives her a little sense of motion. We can go with that. It works. <laughs> We doing okay? Doing these, these drapery folds is actually something that people really struggle with. And the key is really just to make sure, oops, make sure that you um, are using just the, the same colors. Keep your, your brush dirty, don't wash it off. As Soon as you wash it off, that's when you start to have issues. So remember we started with just this uh, magenta color and then we did the U shape here and then we came back with the white and added some, some highlights and then we came back with the dark and we added some, some shadows and that's what gives you the illusion of it being fabric folds. Now I'm going to unhook my camera real quick, maybe for a close-up so you can really see that illusion. Do you see that light in the dark? Those are just different brush strokes that we did. And then because they were blending into the, the magenta that we already had on there, it added that three-dimensionality that makes it look that much more realistic. Pretty awesome, huh? And that was only with three colors, magenta, black, and white. Awesome. Okay, and we got a camera going the right direction. Here we go. Hey, I did it. Okay, fabulous. There we 
we go. Cool. All right, so the very last thing that we need to do is we need to give her her flower in her hair. So we just need magenta and white again. So wash off your brush and get yourself a scoop of that magenta, red, whatever color you're using, and some white. Same time, red and white. Got both of them. Now, the key to this is always starting at that exact same spot. So you're gonna go from the center and pull out. From the center. And just work your way on around, always going that same direction. I need some water. Ooh, that's way too thin. So because it was about to drip, I'm gonna go back over what I've already painted. If you decide to make her flower a different color, that is fine with me too. This is your painting. There you go. Always coming from the center and going out. And that'll give you a really awesome uh, flower. I don't have a whole lot of magenta left on my palette anyway. Now I'm not pressing quite as hard this time and that's adding to the dark, but because it's already got white on it, it's starting to blend it in, which is fine too. But again, you still want to stay right there coming from the center, always going out. And that's going to make it look like a flower. And here is, I've got to fix this. Here's the original. Here's tonight's. Original. Tonight's. Not too bad, huh? And I bet yours is just a slight variation too. Make sure that you uh, post your finished painting in the comments. I can't wait to see them. I love, love, love seeing your versions. And um, if you had a good time tonight, the virtual tip jar is open. You can cash at Venmo, Venmo or PayPal me at Lauren Luna LTD. Join me next week, same time. And we're gonna do this beach theme don't mind the text that's my advertisement we're gonna do this beach theme next week all right thank you again for joining me hopefully we will be done with this uh, corona nonsense eventually <laughs> But until then, I am here with you and we are going to paint every Friday at 7 p.m. Central Time. Feel free to get yourself a painting kit. Uh, they are buy one, get one, 20% off. And you get a free table easel while supplies last. There's about 15 or 16 different options. More come pretty much every week and that's all I got to say. So have a great night. And don't forget to post your, or your uh, paintings in the comments. And again, virtual tip jar. Thanks. Uh, let's see, I have a hashtag. We are alone together. There it is. All right, good night. <laughs>